So the other day I was talking to a developer and they said they weren't happy about writing the gizmo code in the component classes as they felt they were more deserving of being in the editor class for that component. Now what I replied to them was, well, why don't you just put them in the editor? They looked at me funny for a little while and then I made it worse by saying, oh, and maybe you can make the gizmo selectable as well. That didn't help matters. So let's, in this video, jump into making gizmos in the editor class. And at the end, I'll even show you how to make that gizmo selectable so you can select the object it actually belongs to. Now, I know it seems a little cliche that most of my videos start with me saying that I was talking to some developer and they asked me something and then I gave them an obscure answer that they'd never heard of before. But that's honestly how I get a lot of my inspiration to do these niche tool tutorial videos. So in other words, what I'm saying is keep making requests out there and having conversations in the comments for these videos because it might spur the next tutorial video I create. So let's get started. Let's start with a gizmo. Nice and brief, to the point, just for the newbies out there looking to one-up their tools game. Now we have a scene here with a xenomorph looking character and it's in a space station just looking for someone to hug. All the models here are in the asset store and I'll leave links to them in the description if you fancy going and getting them yourself. Now our xenomorph locates huggable crew members by sound and with that we need to know how far this xenomorph will hear. So on the creature here we have a hearing radius and it's got a range there that I can up and down to dictate how far it can actually hear. Now in a full on game I wouldn't use this in a space station. I would actually look at are the doors shut? Is it in a corridor? Is a door open? And how much volume will come through from sound in the other room? You know, start dictating volumes so we can say, okay, somebody's behind another shut door and another shut door. And even though they're within the sphere, they can't be heard because those doors are shut. But we're going to just use a general sphere here for being hearing of the xenomorph to see where the crew members are. Now, we want to visualize that with our script, because if I'm a designer, I want to see how far that goes out. And when the game is playing, I actually want to see when it overlaps to see if something's broken, but also to up and down that range so that I can say how hard or how easy the game will actually be. So let's jump into Visual Studio and get right into that. So we open Visual Studio and we can see our hearing radius is exposed and it's got a range of one to 20. Now, we now want to draw that as a sphere. So we use on draw gizmos. And you'll notice Visual Studio gives me some autocomplete there because this is a function we can actually use and Unity knows about. Now, in this on draw gizmos, what we'll do is we'll draw a wire sphere. So gizmos.draw, oh, if I can spell, there we go, draw wire sphere. Now this Y sphere has to know where there is. So we're going to just give it the position of our object they're actually in. And it needs to know the radius. And luckily enough, we've got that exposed as hearing radius. Now this will draw a white wire sphere for us, which is great, but white is quite a common color throughout this game in this space station. So I might want to make it a different color. In this case, it's a sort of a warning sign because this xenomorph is going to go and hug someone. So we're going to make it red. So let's go ahead and say gizmos color equals color dot red. And that will give us our wire sphere. So let's jump straight back into Unity and we wait. And if I come into the sphere scene and I stop play, there we go. So it reloads, jump back into the scene again. And you can see there it is. There's our red wire sphere. And we can up and down and you can see it working there. Now, this is great if I'm doing a 2D top-down style game because I can see it really clearly and how it intercepts the world. But if this is a sort of a third-person game or something like that, it's going to be harder to see how this is actually intercepting the various parts. So instead of having a wire sphere, let's go with a full sphere. We'll jump back into Visual Studio and we'll just get rid of the wire here and we've got Draw Sphere and that's all we need to do. But with this color red, it will actually just fill an entire sphere in front of us and obscure everything else. And that doesn't work for me. So we're going to give it a different color. We're going to give it a color of red, but we're going to 
make it see-through. So let's jump in and we'll just give it a really low factor, 0.1, save that, jump back into Unity. And once it loads up, there we go. So now we can see, we could see our incidents, this hearing radius, really easy. We can see where it goes all around. Now this is fine if we've got one xenomorph with one sphere out there, but if there's a lot in our scene, then this could make the tool a little bit cluttered. So we might wanna say, okay, only draw the spheres of the creatures I have selected. And how we do that is we can go into Visual Studio and we can just append onto the end of here, selected, on draw gizmos, selected. And then we come back into Unity. Well, we try to, there we go. And if we deselect and select, you can see it's going on and off. So it doesn't actually render that sphere constantly. And that's super helpful. We might also think, well, okay, we only actually wanna show it when the application is playing. And what we can do is we can say if application dot is playing, and what will happen is that means that when it comes to this function, it will say, well, is the application playing? Yes, it is, draw the sphere. If it's not, don't worry about it. It's only for a runtime debug that we're actually gonna have this in. Now, we can have all sorts of gizmos for this, and you can use boxes, lines, other shapes, icons, etc. And a couple of examples of this is, I have spawn points in some of my games, and those spawn points produce creatures or spaceships or enemies that are gonna come and get you. Now, those enemies are prefabs outside of the scene. They don't exist in that scene. But when I'm scrubbing the timeline for that particular level, that particular wave, I want to know what's going to come up there before having to play, because I don't want to have to play all the way through the level just to see that last wave when it's going to come up, to see when there might be collision incidences between the enemies or when I've overloaded the spawns. And what I can do is I can have it draw wire meshes with the gizmo, and that gizmo will show me, oh, there's a xenomorph spawning there, there's a xenomorph spawning there at that time, without having to bring in the prefab and delete it out of runtime, because that doesn't make sense. So wire meshes are really handy for that sort of thing. Another use is to have icons display. Now let's say I've got my xenomorph here, and that creature is lurking around, but it's in an idle state, and then it goes into hunt. Now it might not be super apparent that it's roaming, or it's hunting. And what I could do is I could actually display an icon above that xenomorph to say, this is actually hunting, or this is in an idle state. So icons are super helpful there, and I use that in some of my games. Now, if you're interested in either of those things, let me know in the comments, and I'll make a video just about how to put icons above a creature to show its state, or even I'll put a video out there that shows how to do debug meshes, so that you can actually see what's spawning at what point. But let's stick with this video and let's jump into why we're here. And that's to build this gizmo in the editor. So we go back into Visual Studio. We take this code here in our component, we cut it, and then we paste it into our editor. Now I've already got this editor set up and if you haven't used editors before, then you haven't been watching my channel. I use them everywhere. Go and check out some of the other videos afterwards and you'll see how they work and what they're there for. Now, with the gizmo and drawing it in the editor, we actually use a special property, and that's called draw gizmo. Now, with this, we actually have to say what the type of gizmo is. So gizmo type. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use the selected for now, and I'll go through a few of the rest of these coming up. Now, this won't work straight away because this function has to be a static. I also don't like the fact that we've got the copied thing, the copied on there, and we don't need to say it's selected because that actually comes from the property. Now, this does take some parameters, and in this case, it takes a creature because that's the type of this custom editor. It's for the type creature. And it also takes in what the gizmo type is. So you can play around with that because you can select many of the types up the top here, and then dictate what happens in the actual function itself for that type coming in. So let's fix up some of our code. We don't wanna be playing, 
We want to use the creature transform position because that's super helpful. And we also want to get this hearing radius. Now, if we look back at the code in the component, I actually expose this in a property here and I just put a getter around it just so I can get it. Don't need to edit it outside. We only edit it in the serialized field. So here we go. If we save these files and I come back into Unity, what we'll find is that if we have the creature selected, it's still working the way it was before. Brilliant. Now, this property actually gives us a little bit more functionality than we get with the gizmos in our component. We can actually put in here non-selected. And then if we go back into Unity, we'll see when we go back in, there we go, that if I haven't got the creature selected, it now shows. But when I press on it, it doesn't show. Now, you can't do that without actually going into the onDraw gizmos in your component and using the selection class and then seeing if the creature is actually selected. And if it's not selected, then doing it. This property gives us a really quick, easy way to do that. And you might be saying, why do I want to show the gizmo when my creature isn't selected? And the reason here can be multiples. And I'll give you one example. If I have spawn points all around my actual scene, so I've got them in many of the rooms you see here, I might not have something that renders in that place. I might not have a game object there with a mesh. It might just be a blank position that I just populate and spawn with creatures as time goes on. But if I want to see those in the scene, then I can have it. So when I've not got them selected, they actually highlight. And when I select them, they disappear off. So that non-selected actually gives you that option to do that. Now, another option is to say, OK, I'm only interested when it's active or it's in the selection hierarchy or it's not in the selection hierarchy. And what does that one mean? Well, if we go to that and we press save, so we're looking at in the selection hierarchy. If I come back into Unity, here we are, I can press it and it shows. If I put a game object down and make this creature a child of that game object, again, it still shows. Now this is different than if this was just actually at selected, because if it's at selected, you actually have to have selected the game object itself. And if you're on the parent, as you see here, it's not showing, but when you're on the object, it is. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you can also use these gizmos as a selection tool. And let me show you how to do that. So we'll come back into Visual Studio. And what we'll do is we'll say, if it's not selected, oh, and also we'll have gizmo.type pickable. And that's the important one here. If I save this and I come back into Unity, there we go, took a bit of time. Now, if I've not got the creature selected, it's showing the actual sphere. And what I can do is I can press on this sphere and it selects the creature. And I'll just show you that again. I've got the wall object here selected. I've got this filing cabinet selected. As soon as I press the sphere, it selects the creature. So you can imagine if you've got objects that are really hard to select out there, you could have it. So when they're not selected, they actually have a gizmo that draws. Let's say there's a line that you want to select you could actually have a cylinder around that line with the gizmo, and then you could press on that and suddenly you're actually selecting the item itself. So that could come in really useful for some of our tools that we develop. Now, I wanted to finish this video a little differently. I wanted to finish this video with an apology. I've been made aware that these tutorial videos are causing feature creep. So I'd like to remind all the devs out there that with building great tools and becoming a great tools developer, there's a responsibility to production time. If a tool that you're creating saves time in the long run for a video game or an experience that you're creating for you or the designer or multiple people on your team, then it's an important tool that should be created. However, if it doesn't, you should still create it anyway because these tools make things look pretty and they're awesome and otherwise people won't watch this channel. So outside of that, the only important thing to do is make sure you hit the like button, 
make sure you're subscribed and obviously tell everybody about this channel because we want to get the subscriber count up so more people get to build awesome tools. And as always, thanks for watching.